Philippians chapter 1, if you could go there. Philippians chapter 1. We're looking at some of the great attributes that this church has that we can learn from to be a true New Testament church. I'm about you, like, I mean, we talked about today during Sunday school the importance of the Word of God. How true is the Word of God for your life, folks? Is it good? Okay, it's, it's a way how we need to think. It's a way how we need to, how our heart needs to be fixed on Him. I always tell everybody this. You look at this Bible right here. Look here. I, don't, I want a clear understanding of his character, his personality, his mind, and his heart, his being, and it's in this Bible. Amen? I want the purity of it. So in order to not only for me as an individual, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm going according to God's word uh, and try to allow God to work in it, teach it, apply it to my life. Is everybody perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. But I want, I'll make sure I got the good stuff. Amen? So, so should the church. A church should be looking at the Word of God, seeing all the truths of the Bible, everything that is there, and all these churches that Paul was teaching to, there are certain things that he had to address. Each church was kind of different, but yet they had a lot of common theme, like with unity and love and, and, and make, keeping things in order and keeping according to the gospel and truth. You start seeing similarities in each one, but yet there were some differences. So we're going to look at, at, we looked at every single church here, and right now we're going to look at Philippi, and the next week we're going to look at uh, the church at Colossae, and then the church at Thessalonica. We should be done uh, by the end of the month, and now we're going to see about Charity Baptist. We really need, I want to make sure we are biblical, we're lining up to the Bible, and not uh, what I think. Amen? Who cares what I think, right? I care what God thinks. Amen? Philippians chapter 1, if you could. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll read verse 9, 10, 11. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 9, 10, and 11. Paul says to the church of Philippi, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Whew! That's pretty good, huh? I want you to notice here that there's some lessons. Each chapter, there's something that kind of Paul kind of zoned in on and trying to make sure that the church here at Philippi is looking at things uh, a certain way. And I want you to notice here, I'll, I'll repeat it again, that your love may abound yet the more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment. I'm going to tell you this right now. Yes, love is an emotion, but that love has to be established in your heart deeply by falling in love with our Savior. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he stands for and all that he is, you're going to want to take that, what he wants you to do to the furthest ends because he showed his love already, John 3.16, he showed his love already to you on the cross of Calvary. He showed on there how his love was extended. I, I shared a comment here on Thursday about... How Jesus showed his love right to the very end. We talked about, the whole lesson was on devotion. Not just devotions of reading your Bible and praying, but devotion to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ fulfilled it, and he said, first of all, he was on the cross, he said it was finished, paying for the penalty. But then, in order to have, give you an abundant life, right? Give you an abundant life, an eternal life, he rose from the grave that we talked about last week. So Christ went right to the very end, but it was amazing how he came back. Remember he came back? And he showed himself to, to, the, to those uh, disciples and those, uh, those apostles who say, why did he? Because he wanted to make sure that their journey on this earth went to the very end. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I have finished my course. He took his life to the very end, to his last breath, his last ounce of strength, just like Jesus did. So I'll ask you a question. What's, what is the fuel for you to get to the very end? Your love for Jesus. Amen? And if you love Jesus, you're going to love his church. You're going to love his church. If you love his church, you're going to love his ministry. Let me ask you a question. Who does Jesus love? Okay, well, who's everybody? Who, who's in the world? Who said sinners? Miss Barb, you're on. You're on, Miss Barb. Sinners. If you love enough sin, if you love, look at, if you love enough sinners... What, do you, what does God want you to do in order to show your love to sinners? Love 
No, that's 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 that, no, that's a that's a dis display of. Go ahead. Give them the gospel. Give them the good news. So you're going to answer, listen, Jesus died for the world, and the world rejected him, right? So here Paul's telling this church, listen, I want you, he goes, I want you to prove, he goes, I, that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent. I sure do know that Jesus died for a reason. <laughs> How many here agree on that? He did die for a reason, right? And I'm pretty sure that Jesus loves sinners. How many agree with that, right? I'm pretty sure he'd only pick what he wants to pick, like a Calvinist does, okay? But I'm pretty sure, don't get mad at me, just, just what it is, whosoever, amen? So, so, but I'm just trying to tell you, God loves sinners. So why don't we love sinners? Can I tell you what separates this church from others? We love sinners. You could come in ugly, we're going to love you and say you're pretty. Once you get Jesus... Jesus looks at you quite differently than the world does. Religion and other churches. Can I tell you right here? Approve. Look at that. Approve. Approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Look at You can never go wrong in loving somebody. Loving your, your brother or sister in the Lord. You can never love enough to get them to see their sin and, and, and give them the victory. Listen. Sometimes I hear hate saying the truth to somebody because you know you're going to get backlash. But you, but you know you need to because you love them. Right? Here, Paul is telling this church, because I, I love you, I want you to see what's excellent. Sometimes telling the truth to somebody, to their face, might be kind of rough to them receiving it, but you're doing it out of love because you're doing, listen, you're trying to save their life. How about a sinner? You're trying to save their soul and their life. Amen? Yes, there's a proper way how to do it. I, I suggest you do it out of love. I suggest you do it with a tear in your eye. I suggest you do it with a broken heart because you know that journey. You know that road where they're going to go down and they're going to be ruined because of sin. Here, Paul is talking to this church. And let me tell you, it, we used a verse here. I forgot. I think it was Brother Pete read this. He goes, 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. If Jesus, if God, listen, if God loves his church, then we should love our church. Right? If God loves the church, we should love our church. If he loved us first, we should love him back. And all the things that he loves. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Number two, it says here in John chapter 15, verse 13, greater love they had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. How far will you go for, for another? How much will you invest? How much will you sacrifice? How much will you put aside of your life in order to invest in another life so they can get the same joy, the same blessing, the same peace, the same beauty of understanding who you have in Jesus like you do. John chapter 13, verse 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have one love one to another. That's what Miss Bar Man, Barb, you're on the ball today. Did you steal my message? Did Harry steal it? Did you, you did? What do you mean shaking your head, Harry? Because because you're in my office. I think you took it off the thing and, you know. <clears throat> I'm just telling you, listen. We need to love sinners so they come to Christ. Our church, like, this church is named Charity. What, what does charity mean? Who can tell you what, Brother Dave, what does charity mean? It's, it's, love. it's love. What kind of love? Agape. So who said agape? Agape love. Supreme. Supreme agape love. Unconditional love. Yeah, all, I mean, all that. Everything you see, unconditional, sacrificial. But here's the issue. If Jesus did it for you, why can't we do it for others? Hey, right? Why, if Jesus did it for us personally, why can't we do it for us? That's a pretty good thing to learn for a church, is it not? Amen. Right? And we can display it each of our lives at home, at work, with family and friends. Let's start, let's start here in the church. That's what he's trying to get a hold of this. Here's number two. Ready? Number two. Look at verse, uh, let's go to chapter two of Philippians. Chapter two. Let's read, um, oh, let's read verse five through eight. Philippians chapter two. We're kind of going through a little bit here of uh, through the book of uh, Philippians here, but in chapter 2, look at starting in verse 5, says this, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. Jesus, amen? Listen, I, did I tell you before? Having the mind of Jesus is a whole lot better than the mind that you used to have. Even I'm saved and born again, my mind has to be fixed on him because this world's crazy. I know my flesh is not, I can't trust my flesh. How many of you are going to trust your flesh? I can't. 
My flesh is no good. It's wicked. It's undone. Thank God I got the Holy Spirit inside here taking care of business. Amen? That's why I died daily every day because if my flesh took over, you wouldn't have a pastor today. <laughs> All right? I just says, <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Look at now, verse 7, now in 8, this is very crucial here. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Oh, not king? Not dictator? What did I say in there? Do you see dictator, king, prophet, servant? Took upon, look at, he became, look at, he became a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Woo! Think about it. In the likeness of man, look at, he came down, he came to serve us. He took his crown off in heaven, came down, and became a servant to us. Why can't we not serve one another? How about this, sir? Why can't we serve him? So he said the perfect example. He, the most, the biggest example ever, he's our example of being a servant. Oh, I can't. Oh, I, I, I can't. Oh, oh, yeah. Man, I see. I see you taking 15 metro buses. I see you driving all over East Jungle Land. I see you bouncing around, dancing in the backyard. I see you playing with your grandkids. But I can't serve it. <clears throat> what? I see what you do at work. I see how many 15, 25, whatever, you know, you do. All the activity you do for yourself, but you won't serve Jesus. But yet he served you. I see what some of you guys do with that hammer and that saw. When you're working, I can't, really? Use your talents out for the Lord. Be a servant. Humble yourself. Give yourself to God to serve. Do something to give him the glory in it, amen? To be a blessing to someone else, to further the gospel out. It goes on here, it goes on here in verse 8. It says, and being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah, he did that, right? Well, we would have never got salvation. Eternal life. Humility is a key. Can I tell you, when I first started this church, <clears throat> I wanted to be recognized by amongst a lot of our folks to say, hey, we're here. Listen, I could care less. I could care less what they think of, of this church. I could care, care less. When I was on deputation, trying to raise money for this, this, this type of ministry, some of the stuff that came out of some of these pastors have been pastoring for 30, 40, 50 years almost made me want to puke. There's only a handful of folks that saw the vision. And I can I tell you this right now, there's people that they just, some of the stuff that came out, they just sit there, you scratch your head and go, where did this come from? How is that edifying? How is that? Hey, I got behind your brother praying for you. No, it, was almost, it was almost like doomsday, whatever. I go, I had to sit there and mark that, dear pastor, whatever you are, you know, and separate and say, listen, it goes on to, it goes on to God. I'm going to give it to God. And now listen, I'm going to be honest with you, I had to humble myself. I said, God, here it is. It's your church, your ministry. You called me to it. I tried to run from it three times. You keep bringing me back. So obviously I'm here. I'm here for the long haul. To a death do his part. Amen. <laughs> and I said, all right, here's going on his journey. What's going on? I had to humble myself. And each, each year or whatever, there's always a humbling thing to, to be more of a servant. Well, you can't wear ten hats. I know I can. I'm trying to give them away. No one wants to take them. Someone take some of my hats away. I don't like all these hats. I only have, you know, that's what happens when I got bald peaks. I wore too many hats. I got my Yankees hat. <laughs> got my hat. <laughs> Jen's like, no, not the Yankees, no. <laughs> I, I, you know, my Sabres hat, my Bills hat. Oh, I, lo I love Jesus hat. I got all my hats, you know. I got all my hats. You know, there's a flag, American flag, you know, love country, love God. You know, all my hats I got, right? And so you sit there and, and just humble yourself. Can, can we be a humble church? Can we? Is humility important to your life as it is mine? Listen, being proud, like we can be proud of Jesus, who he is and what he's done, but listen, we just go about our business and people can give us acclimates. We, we've gotten a lot of great compliments over the years, right, guys? How do you get so much done with so little? Some of the bigger churches look at us and they sit there and they say, how do you get so much done with so little? I guess my answer to them is, God, lots of prayer, God, we, we, we plan, we prepare, we start something with the, 
with a little, and next thing you know, God provides along the way, and it gets done. Hey, can I tell you something here? We've been an encouragement to them because we stayed humble. Let's be a church that stays humble. Number three. Look over here in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, if you could. How, so far, so good, folks? Are we good here? Are we good here? I mean, are these are good things for your own life. These are good things for the church, right? Do you want to be a church that's biblical or not? Or do you want to be a church that's just floating through life and kumbaya in it through, amen? You know, there's one song I can't stand, it's kumbaya song. I know, I love a lot of good Christian songs, but that's one I can't get into. So don't tease me with it. Here we go. Uh, Philippians chapter 3. See, I knew they said that is going to happen, you know. Philippians chapter 3, look at verse 17, if you could. Verse 17 says this. Brethren, <clears throat> be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so you uh, have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and show, <clears throat> show, um, Oh, where am I at here? Show for his glory. That's right, right? For his glory and, his, and their shame, who minor earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, for once also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, uh, that it may be a fashion like unto his glorious body, according to the working, uh, to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. See, what kind of church do you want to be? I want to be a church that has a priority of identifying falsehoods. I mean, will you guys, how many here want to be mis misled? Anybody want to be, be tricked and misled and deceived? Anybody here? How many here, how many hunger for truth here? Do you hunger for truth, yes or no? If you don't hunger for truth, then you're floating on an island all by yourself. You're, you're, actually, you're probably lost. Even though you're a Christian, you're lost then. We ha Listen, there's going to be a lot of enemies of the cross, and please don't mistake it that we're, we're slandering them. No, we're, we're identifying them so you don't get misled. You have no idea if I were to tell you about what I think about Billy Graham, you probably must mislike, you might dislike me. But if you study Billy Graham's ministry, you will scratch your head and go, I've never seen it that way. Did he have some great messages? He sure did. I'll take it and run with it. If you only knew what he did behind the scenes, too, which you might soon know pretty soon. <laughs> behind the scenes. You think, Pastor, you're talking crazy again. Listen, folks. What's the great... In order to find truth, what do you got to do? Who said research it? Who said research? Research it, seek it, and find truth. You, you look at, look, you're looking at some preachers behind the pulpit that you admire and desire. You have no idea their background and where they, what they've done behind the scenes until you research it. And you find out you're going to sit there and go, no way. Now, I use John MacArthur for a reason because someone here was a diehard John MacArthur person. They found that the doctrine of the, of the blood atonement wasn't even existent. You know what? What can wash away my sins? Not John MacArthur. He didn't believe in that. But we need it. It's essential. It's not the, the, blood, the, the blood atonement is essential for you and I getting our sins washed away. He don't believe it. I don't know how he just teaches it away. You can't do that. That's not truth. We need to identify, in this church, we need to identify those that are trying to mislead us away from the truth. Mean us, mislead us. Folks, I'm telling you, I'll be very careful. I don't want you to be deceived and get messed up. Amen? I don't want you to, be, to, to sit there. This church has to show you the slight. How did it happen in the garden? It sounded pretty good in the garden. You could be just like God, and the subtleties misled somebody. How many people misled people away from believing Jesus when he was walking on the earth? A lot. Just think about that. How many misled you, misled you in your life? We want you to know truth. Truth. And the more we can show you the differences between truth, we're going to get it. Here, this church needs to keep preaching truth. And I've got to tell you, if, listen, what does, it say, what does it say in John chapter 8, verse 32? And we want to go there real quick. Pete, you got a Bible right there? Go to, Pete, go to John chapter 8, verse 32. Very familiar verse. Chapter 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. Okay. 
Think about that. Let me tell you something. I want, how many of you feel free when you hear truth? How many get excited when you read your Bible, you learn something for that day? Like, I never knew that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Right? Listen, look, look at what he says. Let's go up to verse 7 here in the same chapter what Paul says. But what things were gained to me, those I kind of lost for Christ. Can I tell you something right here? Don't get mad at me now. So I thought a certain way when I first got saved, but I had to lose a lot. What did you lose, Pastor P? I lost some friends, but I gained some. I lost my mindset and the way how I thought. I argued with my pastor tooth and nail. No, 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 no. And he goes, here, read these verses. I study and I go, oh, my goodness. What am I believing? Because I was in my heart. Oh, in my heart. It's, I know it. it's in my heart. And I looked at the truth. I go, oh, my goodness. This isn't of God. <laughs> I had to humble myself and I had to change my priorities in life as a Christian. Don't get scared when you see truth or you read, you read and you get more truth. Don't let it be offensive to you. Embrace it to really look out and like Holy Spirit show you the truth. He said, I count it but loss. Yet doubtless, and I, look at verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I, I count all things but the loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them for, but, but dung. Then why? That I might win Christ. Every time your faith gets challenged, don't take it as an insult or, or you're being attacked. Look at it, take the information, look in the mirror of the scriptures, and take it to task by researching it. That's why to find truth. Listen, this church has a priority for truth, priority to, to identify. Look at, we want to put Jesus, how many of you want to put Jesus first? You want Jesus first? But what is it going to take to put Jesus first? No, no, no. In order to put Jesus first, what has to happen? Who, raise your hand, because everybody's talking at once. You got to, might get some things out of the way. But are you willing to get some things out of the way to put Jesus first? Is Jesus first at work? Is Jesus first in your marriage? Is Jesus first in your homes, in your families? Is Jesus first in your walk in life? Is Jesus first in your, in your day when you wake up in the morning? You can have a cup of coffee and read it. A good, big cup of joe. Why do they call it a cup of joe? I have no idea why. But anyways, a cup of joe. Joe Lighton. Yeah, Joe Lighton. Right? <clears throat> the Bible, look at the Bible says here in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, that Jesus said unto, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Amen? That's where God wants. That's the Bible. That's not Pastor Pete. This is a cult. You want me to put Jesus first? No, that's what Jesus said. You see, it's right there. Matthew chapter 22. Verse 37, write it down. Go ahead and check it out. In the same book, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I have never seen anybody go down a bad road when they put Jesus first. But when they leave an open door, or they leave um, an escape, a just, a just in case things don't work out with Jesus, I'm going to go back and do this. I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of them do it. And that's why you don't see them in church anymore. That's why you don't see them serving the Lord. They're this high serving the Lord, then they, 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 they got upset with something, okay, and they went this way and went back to the world, and Jesus and God is whatever. Yeah, I, I believe in them. And the joy and the love and the service of Jesus is gone. I'm going to tell you because they didn't want truth. They want to be truthful about themselves. They want to be truthful with the scriptures. They want truth of living as a real Christian, not a happy. If Jesus gave his all in all for you, are you willing to give your all in all to him? How many here want to be a half Christian? Is there such a thing as a half Christian? <laughs> right. So, so man, is there? <laughs> I just want to ask you a question. I'm going to challenge your, your thought process because I want to ask myself: Why are some Christians just there? Why isn't their life excited for Jesus and serving Him? Because they have still one hand in the world and one hand in, in, on Jesus. And you're going to have to let it go and give it your whole heart. Does it mean I can't do this? I can't. As long as it don't go against the Bible, you're good. Amen. Amen. You know, you can do a lot of things and be a Christian that are very joyful and exciting. It really is. I, listen. You know the truth. Deep down, right? You can't live two lives. But here's the thing. 
When, will, when, when, does usually when, the, when does Jesus comes a priority in your life? When, usually, when does Jesus usually become a priority in your life? When disasters hit. Thank you. When trials and temptations and disasters and trauma and tragedy hit your, hit your life or your family, all of a sudden now Jesus becomes a priority. Why wasn't he a priority in the beginning? Right? I want, I, want to make sure I want to make sure I'm anchored in good so when the storm comes, I'm good. Amen? Amen. Think about that. I want to make sure I'm prepared for every storm, uh, any falsehoods attacking me, anything attacking me that's giving me falsehoods, anything that tries to discourage me away from Jesus, to get closer, to serve him, to love him even greater. I mean, if he loved us fully, I want to love him fully back. If there's things in my life, I've got I to gotta repent of it. Amen? I've got re to repent of it. Praise the Lord. Are we all good here now? We still good? I got two more to go. We're almost done here. We're almost done. I only got ten more minutes. All right, number four, ready? Thoughts. How's your line of thinking? It's almost like an overcomer's class. Pete? Don? Where, who else? Chris? Who else is in that one? Chris, uh, Charlie? Gabe? It's almost like an overcomer's lesson. It's not, though. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. Turn to chapter four, Philippians chapter four, verse six through nine. Amen. All right, here you go, Philippians chapter 4. I want you to look, if you could, look at verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. These things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace, peace shall be with you. Here at Charity Baptist Church and this church of Philippi, we want you to think pure thoughts. This Bible is pure, right? Think on, think on the word. Think on heaven. Think on Jesus. Think on how, how good God is in your life. Has God been good in your life? Think on those things. Where he took you from, where you at? Enjoy, rejoice, give thanks, weep, cry. And let him, let him embrace you with his love and hug you up because that's what it is, all intimacy with Jesus. But it all starts with how you think and the time you spend around him. Meditate on him, amen? In Colossians chapter 3, turn over if you could. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Get a chance for you to go over there. Colossians chapter 3, because we're going to look at a couple passages right in there. As you turn over to Colossians chapter 3, I'll read this other verse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that ye may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Your thinking might be wrong. Hey, guess what? Your thinking might be wrong. Yes or no? Sometimes my thinking might be wrong. And the only way I can correct my thinking is the word of God. Someone show me in the Word of God why my thinking is wrong so I can get that thing straight. I want to be, be a church that thinks like God, that God would want, and do what God would want. Amen? But in Colossians chapter 3, look at verse 15 and 16, says this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. One body, right here, folks. One body, right here. Okay? Verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Woo, that's a good meditation. How many of you sing at work? I do. I've been caught sometimes, Jen. I had people say, he goes, I think I know that song. <laughs> I go, what is this song? That's Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. I remember that when I was a kid, and I went to church. Right. Do you go to church now? No. 20 years I've been out of church. You need to come to church. <laughs> Sometimes I, gotta, I get at work, I don't talk about Jesus at work. Like, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Right? Look at, look at the beginning of chapter 3. Ready? Look at chapter 3 here in the very beginning, starting in verse 1. Same chapter. It says, if then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Second now, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 
For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, look at now, key word here. When Christ, who is what? Does that, does that show devotion and commitment? Hello, work with me here. You prioritize God, and now your thinking's all about God. I think you're all, you you see that He's number one in your life. It says, "When Christ, who is our, our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory." So somewhere in there, we, folks, we need to be like Enoch, walk with God so intimately that all of a sudden, bam, we get translated up. We need to have fire and excitement to serve the Lord like Elijah. So when when the battle rises up, we can get out here and cheer you. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's how we need to live. Yeah. Or we need to be like Paul and just keep pressing on and pressing on and pressing on. One of, one of uh, right there, what is that? P has some good, P gets a lot of verses. What's wrong with the rest of you guys? P, pressing towards the mark, right? Thinking those things behind, what's that? <laughs> is that your life verse? Yeah. Go in and read it, get it, find it for me. You know, you know by, you know by um, where, quote it. Quote, you know how to quote it? Yeah. Quote it. I'm going to tell you right now, look at, don't, look at, don't, 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 look at, keep pressing forward. All right, turn to here, turn back to Philippians chapter 4. We got, it. We got five minutes, amen, five minutes, and I want to <clears throat> have Brother Mike Nolder close in prayer, and then we'll get into our announcement. Um, all right, Philippians chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 4. Look at 10, 11, 12, and 13, Okay. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 10, says this, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye are, look at, you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned to whatever state I'm in, therewith to be content. He says on here, he says, <clears throat> he says, I know both how to be abased and how I know how to be abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I could do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Notwithstanding, ye have well done, and ye have communicated with my affliction. Hallelujah. See that? So can I tell you something here? If you've been here, like, where's one? Brother Mike, Brother Harry, Brother Paul, my wife, Brother DeHaffey, Brother Miss Marcia, we, in this church here, the last 16 and a half years, we've been up, we've been down. We've been up, we've been down. We've been up, we've been down. We're going to be talking about that. We've been up, and we've been down. We've been, we've been struggling, and then we've been blessed. We need, we're in lack of, God provided. Am I right or am I wrong? Now, so... Can I tell you something? I want to let you know that we're, we, we, are, we are sufficient with God. Amen? We're sort of sufficient with all that God has for us. It says here in, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, and he, said, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, all, I, I would rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, folks, listen, if you're going through something in your life, health reasons, financial reasons, let that weakness, let God make perfected to a strength. That means you don't quit on God. That means you don't forsake the assembly of ourselves. Don't, don't be missing church. Don't be missing your Bible. Don't be missing prayer. Don't be missing your daily walk with God. And listen up here. Don't ignore God when God's knocking on your heart. He's sufficient. He wants to provide. He wants to lead. He wants to strengthen. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to be there for you. Don't push him away. Because he's the one that's truly sufficient for you. Um, and 2 Corinthians 3, 5 says this. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen? That's 2 Corinthians 3, 5. You want to copy this? I can give you a copy of this. Here's a big one for today. You ready? With all this COVID stuff and the way how the world's going to hell in a handbasket. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Brother Dave, can you read that? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, if you could. Read that one up nice and loud. <clears throat> 2 Timothy. So when, you, when your cage gets rattled in life, your cage gets rattled, and you feel like you're on, on, on 
quicksand and not solid ground, when your heart is trembling and you're trembling and you don't know what's going to happen, you're going to have a nervous breakdown, hey, don't fear. With Christ, you have the power of God on your life. Amen? Amen? 